Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. We've got a very exciting video for you today. What we're going to do is learn about replacing a background. What we'll do is we'll take an image where we photographed a model on just a plain gray and we will learn how to kind of clean things up a little bit separate that subject and maybe drop some textures or some backgrounds in behind and just kind of give it a whole different look uh, rather than just have a plain gray put in a, a whole different scene and it's pretty simple to do not a whole lot of work and we may even clean it up a little bit afterwards in uh, Neo to just give it a little more impact but I think it'll be pretty educational and not too difficult at all. If you haven't done so already, I hope you'll take a second to subscribe to the channel. Still trying to reach that goal of 1 billion subscribers. Still a little far from that goal, but keep working toward it. And if you will take a second to subscribe, you can help me get just a little bit closer. But without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Okay, so we're here in Photoshop, and here's the image we're going to use. Just kind of a studio outtake. Uh, you can see some of the soft boxes and things in the frame. Uh, so we're going to crop this a little bit, then go through and try and decide um, what we can do to kind of add some textures to this background, just kind of maybe put in some sort of different backgrounds. Same process as if you were going to just completely drop her into a different scene, um, but rather than drop her into a whole different scene, I'm just going to kind of change the background by um, adding some textures and things to it. So let's do this really quick. Let's kind of prep this image um, for what we're going to do. And I think we'll start out by uh, just taking here the uh, patch tool and start going through here. I'm just basically circling it, dragging it somewhere else, makes it disappear. We could even try to See if we can get rid of this whole dark area. Not sure if this will work or not. It's not going to be a big problem for us, but let's try that. Pretty good. Uh, still dark over there, but that's not going to be a big issue. Um, let's go ahead and recrop this. And we'll do it to a 5 by 7 I want to change things a little bit. I want to get rid of that. I'd like a little more room at the top, so I think that looks pretty good. Zoom in a little bit. And you can see it's left us with this white band at the top, which will not be a problem for us. We're just going to take the marquee tool and uh, Command T, Control T, to transform, drag that up. I'm holding down Shift Y, drag it up so that it doesn't uh, spread out in all directions. There we go. Okay, so we've got the image kind of prepped how we want. I would probably go in here really quickly and just clean up the hair a touch. We've got a few strays. I'm just going to get the cloning tool here at 100%. And just go through here. Clean that up just a touch. And I'm just clicking on Option, choosing an area out here. Coming through erasing it a little bit. Not too worried about that. Uh, we can set it to 50%. Pick a spot out here. Soften that a little bit. It's going to go away when we add our textures, but uh, it's not a big deal to go ahead and fix it if that bugs you. Go back to 100. Swipe out some of this. I think that's pretty good. We could even take care of this if you want. I don't think we need to give it a super clean up because we're going to go back and work on her a little bit um, in the software. So I think that works pretty well. Okay, so I think we're pretty much ready to go now. Let's go ahead and select the subject. And this is gonna be really easy in Photoshop, especially when we've photographed on kind of a simple background like this. So we're just gonna come up here and get this quick selection tool, W. And then all you have to do is hit select subject things for a second and you can double check here to make sure it looks right but I think it looks pretty good so let's select mask look here make sure everything's good I think it's looks like a really nice selection so I'm happy with that I'm gonna come over here new layer with layer mask is what we want hit OK and so here's what we have we have her selected like this and then the bottom layer is the regular image so when they're both on, you can't see anything because um, 
you're seeing through to the bottom, but the top layer is actually just her. And you can see that up here when we see the mask, and that's all black, which means it's gone. All that's here actually is the white part of the image. So we'll leave them like that for now. Let's drag in this wall and floor texture. I'm going to hit F so we can get the whole screen here to work with. Hit Command or Control T to transform. And play around with this. It looks like it's slanting a little bit. Let's tilt that. Maybe make it a touch bigger. Up a little bit. I think that's pretty good. About like that. Okay. Hit return. Got the background locked into place. Now let's change the blending mode because I don't want it. I want to still kind of keep some of that existing background behind her. Let's just do a soft light. So we kind of get the feel for this, but without um, having to actually have that full on texture behind her. All right, so let's hit F, get back to our screen again. Let's grab this green, drag it in here, F again to get back to full screen. Command T. This one's actually sized pretty good already. That works. All right, then all we have to do here is come back, change that, probably soft light again, maybe pull down the opacity a little bit. So it's giving it a little bit of texture. Uh, one thing I might do here is make this floor a little darker. So I'm going to make sure I'm somewhere here between the background and the subject. We can go ahead and label this subject just to keep things super organized. But pick a layer in here somewhere. We're going to create a new layer. Come over here, get a brush. We just want a black brush. Just paint in this floor a little bit, make it a little bit darker so it looks a little more realistic. And we could also add a little bit of drop shadow. We can kind of see her drop shadow there that's peeking through from that original image. If we go back to that original image here, she's got a little bit of a shadow going that way. And we can kind of add to that if we want, just make another layer. Again, I'm just using black here with a soft brush. And you can kind of kind of build out this way a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna blend it away here in a second. But just something to give a little more shadow running out that way. Maybe like that. Then take that uh, soft light. And bring the opacity way down so you can just almost see it. There we go. That just kind of gives a little bit of direction over that way. We could even take that down a little bit more. That's nice. All right. So pretty happy with this right now. One thing you can do if you want to kind of make her pop out a little bit more is we could go over here and grab the elliptical. Make just an oval, come over here, make a new layer, because we want to do this on its own layer. Pick this color here, and I'm just going to pick kind of a yellowish color. Hit OK, get the paint bucket, and we're filling this little oval like that. Command D to get rid of the marching ants. Now I can grab my move tool. Whoops, better hit. Make sure I'm on the right layer there. I'll hit Command T to uh, Control T to move this around. Get it kind of behind her. Just almost like a little spotlight. It looks kind of silly right now, don't worry. We're going to come in here and blur it. So filter blur. That's pretty good. Just till it kind of disappears. Change this blending mode, probably to soft light. And we can just kind of, again, tone it down until you almost don't see it. And so it's still there, kind of like that. Now we're going to kind of probably th throw a big curve at this anyways and make some of that color change so it's not going to be as needed. But I think we're pretty good. We've got her dropped in there. I think we could go like this. What I would probably be inclined to do is maybe um, give it a little more effect. You could even do like um, take it into Luminar Neo, for example. Let's go ahead and make a new layer and I'm going to command option shift E 
on the Mac and it's going to basically make a stamped copy of all these layers onto one right up here and I'm going to take this into Luminar and then just for fun you could come through here and pick up one of these templates take experimental um, we could just do the feather light yeah maybe something like that um, go ahead and hit apply I think that works pretty well you can uh, even tone it down just a bit if it's too much for you perfect and I think that gives a really nice look uh, you could go through if you wanted and maybe even um, put in a, uh, a levels adjustment layer tweak up that contrast just a touch see what that looks like I like that maybe even bring it down to 50 percent okay so let's turn all these off just like that so there's where we started let's bring her back added a little bit of uh, a wall behind her darken the floor add a little drop shadow a little spotlight behind her a little more texture and then threw that template on top of it and ended up with a really fun image. I think that's uh, a lot more fun than what we started with and uh, pretty easy to do. And there you go. Pretty simple process. Doesn't take a whole lot of time. Uh, once you get that subject isolated, then it's pretty simple to drop things in the background and just kind of give it a whole different look. And uh, then, of course, you can drop it into any other software that you want to further fine tune it. And it just depends on where you want to go with the image. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts on how you think it turned out. Leave me a comment below and let me know. But that's all for this week, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.